Hey, it's Steph from Happy Place to Grow. I'm here on this final work day of the 2020 school year. And I thought it would be fun to just kind of reflect, think back to um, all of the activities and changes that we have had to work through in this very different school year. Yes, it has been quite the challenge. So as I'm reflecting, I'm just thinking when we started school here, we started with a hybrid model. We had a group, group A coming on Monday, Tuesday, group B came on Thursday, Friday with a remote day for everyone in um, the middle of the week. So we were basically, both groups were experiencing three remote days and um, two school days. So that was a little bit um, different to juggle. It was a lot of work to compile and send home. And then, you know, the challenge was to guide and help the parents to be able to help their students so that actual learning was taking place on those remote days and still being responsible for the students that were in house for those two days and making sure that the activities were meaningful. You know, one thing that I really realized when the students came back was really just how big the gap was with their learning. And so we had to really bridge those learning gaps in math, especially math. We're still working on that. Um, reading has is coming along a little bit quicker. Um, math is still a little bit of a challenge. We're still working on some basic skills to get them up to speed so they can move forward and be ready for second grade. Um, so, you know, the working through all of that was very challenging. And then our superintendent decided that um, when the governor just worked, opened everything up, that we could come back four days a week. All the students would be joining together. That actually occurred at the end of October. So again, we had uh, a change from what we had started with. So we had to shift gears, shift the mindset. And um, the good part of that was only having to prepare remote work for um, one day. But then the challenging part was having to bring all the students together um, into reading groups and math groups and making sure that um, the material was for, prepped for four days and not just for two days and then reused on the next group for those two days. So it was a little bit of a juggle. I am so thankful that our superintendent really opened up that opportunity for learning because I have one thing I've realized is that the students work better when they're in school, they're working with you, you're able to troubleshoot or move them along because you're seeing them every day and you're working with them. So that has been a true blessing. We've come to the end of 2020. So I am here today thinking about some changes that I want to do in my classroom. So one thing I definitely uh, decided to do was uh, early on in October, I actually sent up, set up a little reading area with a carpet. I know I showed you that in one of my videos. So I've actually brought in my reading table and I'm going to be working with my students still in small groups, but we'll be around this table. And I've got a shelf set up over here so I can just pull their basket of reading materials. So that's one thing I've been working on. I've moved my carpet over to the front of the room. Let me just walk you over there. And I'm thinking about, this will be different for uh, math. I'm thinking about doing a small group here on the carpet with math. It's so hard with their desks being distanced. You can see they're still, they're not, of course, six feet, but there's no way that um, 
you know, we can distance. So we distance as much as we can. Um, but when the students are working in their small group math time with me, they're at their desk. That's what we've been doing so far. It's really challenging for me to see how they're working and to uh, troubleshoot and help them. So I've always had my students on the floor in a small group setting. So I'm thinking about putting them around the edge of the carpet for us to do some math activities. So that will be something different that I'm thinking about um, starting when we get back in January. The other exciting thing I'm starting with my students is centers. So up until this point, I have not opened up my centers. I wanted to, but I had have not done it yet. So I did get this table set up. I've got these um, sections for each center. Um, I've had this divider for I don't know, many years, ever since I started teaching. I'm not even sure. I think I got it from another teacher, but it works great in the year that we have to separate students and they can't really work face to face. This is a great little division for them. Um, so I'm starting out really, really simple with my centers. I've got um, four centers, actually three centers located over here, and then a painting center, which I'll take you to and a listening center. So I've got the centers all um, separated. And um, so that's really exciting. Um, this center is center four, just because we're over here, I'll start here. And I always have a poetry center. So each um, month we have a new poem that we recite and we go through and identify the rhyming words and we repeat it every morning in our morning meeting time. So for January, it's going to be the poem, How to Talk to Your Snowman. So I've got that already set up and they get to repeat the poem and point to the words. And then I've got a magnetic board where they're going to um, sequence the poem and put it back in the right order. And then they're going to be filling in the missing words. So that's a fun activity. I'm also working on setting up my reading little reading nook over here and this will be for epic books i don't know if you've checked out epic books it's a great uh, app that you can download on a device and you can put your class in it's free and they have access to thousands of books and videos so i've already put my class into epic books and um so i just have to school them and walk them through. This is something, again, that I've not um, branched out with my students. I've not um, sh I've showed them how to get to Epic Books. So, so we'll um, find out about Epic Books in January. This will be a center that they can go to. They click on their little icon, their little avatar, and then they can um, make their choices and uh, they'll explore that and really, really, I think, enjoy it. All right, that is actually center two and center three is over here. And this is going to be a, um, a phonics word work center, maybe sometimes a sentence center. Um, so this month I've got ice fishing and they actually get to fish and I'm from Michigan, so we definitely were exposed to ice fishing. I've got my little frozen pond. My, of course, we're not doing fish. <laughs> Penguins. So um, in this activity, they're going to fish up a penguin, and they're going to see a picture, and they're going to match it with a word on an igloo that rhymes. So this is a nut, and I think the word that they're going to rhyme with is hut and it's it's actually spelled out so um i think this will be really fun for them and something that i think will be just um just you know easy let's go over to sorry about that let's go over to the painting center all right so here we go and it's going to be um painting 
a snowman. I've got a tracer here, and they just, of course, turn this. You know, they'll put the paper here, and then they'll put the stencil on top, trace it, and then paint. Now, here's the deal with the painting center. Of course, I love, I love art, and I love the painting center. And normally, by now, we already would have been painting. They would have started in September. They would have um, already been schooled in how to open the paint cups. This is, you know, a process you have to walk them through. Um, so I will model for them, really go into detail how they, you know, open the paint and how they dip their brush in and wipe it off and um, how they will paint. And this particular project, my paint is very thin, my white paint, so they have to get a couple layers. So they're going to have to put it on the drying rack, which is in the other room. I'll show you that in just a minute, that room um, and what goes on in there. So really schooling them in all things how to paint. Um, and then, oh, we don't know how that's going to go. I'm sure there's going to be some paint spills and some drips and who knows. But, you know, painting is just something that I think every student needs to be able to do and explore. Young young learners need to paint. So I, I have opened up, this is actually center one and then center two, three, and four are located at that round table. And what I do is every month I'll change the activity and um, I'll explain to you how I let my students go to the centers and how they check off where they've been um, in just a few minutes. Let's head over to my listening center. So I've got my listening center set up over here. And um, this book, The Mitten, is actually, I usually do a unit with Jane Brett in January. So this is a CD that they will listen to. Again, normally by now, they would have already been to the center September, October, November, and they would have be all schooled in all things how to turn on the CD player and plug your headphones in and all that good stuff. So that's another thing. Just the, the walkthrough of all the centers is going to be a challenge, but I am willing to do it because center time is awesome. So they'll be listening to the mitten and I have an activity um, that they're going to do over here. They have to color and cut the animals in the story that go into the mitten and glue them from the first animal to the last animal. And sequencing is something that I've worked on with my, with this group of students. Almost every story that we read, we talk about the order of the story events. So I think they'll do pretty well with that. And then I have a, a mitten here that for fun, they can design and color their own mitten. So those are my five centers. I'm launching into those uh, quite bravely. So it'll be interesting, but I'm looking forward to number one, the students being able to go and explore to make decisions because you know going to a center is about choosing and then it's about being an independent worker they have to solve problems because the teacher that's me i'm going to be working at small group reading and i'm going to have my do not disturb sign on so they're going to have to think about what they need to do at their center if they're not sure and they can't remember what should they do next go ask a friend or go back to their seat and work on something else so just the process of teaching them to be independent workers and to problem solve, I think is wonderful. And I think just being able to go somewhere beside their desk is gonna be um, really, I, I don't know, I think it's gonna be great. So I'm excited about launching into these centers and letting the kids explore and work on their own and learn to solve problems. I think that's um, part of their journey into being successful in the next grade level. So I will keep you posted on that. You can see back behind me to um, my Grinch. We, we did, we were able to, even though we had um, 
a inclement weather day, which was a remote day last week, and then we had a two hour delay. We lost some time with our uh, fun Christmas activities, but one thing I like to do is this Grinch drawing. So I am putting it up, and one of their re remote assignments is to write and draw how they would make the Grinch grin. That's something I'm gonna put up there. Even though Christmas is over, I still like to display their artwork because if they work that hard, we should display it. So now I want to show you one more thing that I am working on with my students um, that we started, we started this a couple weeks ago. So when they come in, I have to take the lunch count. Normally I would have them vote for lunch and we had two choices plus lunchbox. This year, since we're simplifying things because of all of the lunch prep and, uh, you know, with everything in the COVID, they have one choice or lunchbox. But still, I thought, well, that'll be easy to have one choice. Still, getting that count correct and having them all raise their hand, who's eating the school lunch, you know, it was a process. So I decided to let my kids start voting for their lunch again, which I do. I'm gonna take you over there to that area. I may have shown you this before, um, but, um, and I did take their photos down because I, you know, for privacy reasons for the students. But anyway, I have this area set up and all of their faces are here. I've got them on little magnets. I have the lunch choice and then lunch box. And so um, one thing I'm trying to work on with them, which has been challenging, is for them to come in, unpack, eat their breakfast, and then come vote for lunch. So we can get that lunch count down pretty quick. Um, they've not gotten automatic with that yet, so I have to remind them all the time. So I'm gonna try to work on them being a little more independent with that. Um, but it's so much easier to get the lunch count when all the faces are here or here. And then students that are not here, that even helps me with attendance because I can see who's not voted. Then my little lunch assistant, the person that is my lunch count, um, does that job, comes over here, counts, uses this little sticky pad, and writes the number of students eating a school lunch and brings it to me. And so I think that is a good little addition. The other thing I'm going to start doing when they get back is one, one thing that we were um, doing early on in the year. I'll just keep it this way because their names are on the front. Um, they created a bathroom pass. And they were taping it to their, their desk, which was fine. It lasted a pretty good long time, but now they keep falling off. So I'm just going to go ahead and let the students um, put their passes in normally in a normal school year. They would have their passes here, and they would just take them, put them on the door, and then when they were done, put them back here. But we've kind of tried to separate a lot of things. However, you know, we've been in school for a while. We were working together every day. So I think it's fine if they just put their passes in here. So we're just going to keep all the bathroom passes in. I've got a basket for the girls and a basket for the boys. So again, new routines. But normally they wouldn't be new in December and January because we would have already done them starting in August. Ah, so interesting, again, 2020, quite the interesting year. Um, I want to let you take a peek into one more little area that um, I'm using with my students that is quite a blessing. So let's go over to the room next door, which I'm actually, it's vacant and I'm actually getting to use. I'm going to pick you up one more time. So this room is actually another classroom. However, it is unoccupied by a teacher um, because we had so many teachers that had to go remote. This is my drying rack for their artwork, which would normally be in my room. However, I am just kind of taking over this room. So again, this is a, it's actually a kindergarten classroom. 
and um, the person that's supposed to be in this room has went remote. They're teaching remotely. They're not in the room yet. So my TA comes in here and works with my students. I put things here for her to work with. So she'll have her two reading groups while I'm doing two groups. And then she does a math group in the afternoon. So morning is reading. So two groups will come in here with their headphones and they will be working um, in a small group right here. We've got our little plastic um, dividers up. So she's got them all set up here. Um, and then the rest of the students that are in the other group that are not working in small group, they are, oops, they are working at uh, seats. We have all the students arranged in a distance way. We are able to do that in here because there's a small group and they're working on iReady math or I ready reading. So it's been a really a blessing to be able to utilize this room. And um, of course, I've got some stuff located over there. So when I do my remote work, I just I can pack things up over here. Um, so I did want to show you how um, I'm able to utilize some space. I'm going to be really sad when I'll be glad when we get another person in here because there'll be more life going on. However, you know, having extra space is a teacher's dream, right? Oh, well, it has been a really interesting year. And again, I'm trying some new things out in 2021 with my students. I'm excited about all the possibilities that um, can take place in January as we come back and we're fresh. I'm excited about all the growth I'm seeing in my students, especially in the area of reading. They are just really, really, um, they're really growing. So uh, it's been quite the year, but hey, we've survived. And I'm really, I think, surprised that we made it to the end of December. I didn't know if we would actually, um, you know, have to go totally remote, but thankfully our students have stayed pretty healthy and the staff is um, in good shape too. So, well, those are my reflections of 2020 and I'm also dreaming of 2021 when we can come back and just keep going and keep the learning um, fresh and new for the students. Well, I hope that you have a great Christmas and a happy new year. And I will see you back again in 2021. So until our next video, as always, have a good one.